you need a gaming PC, but all you've got is one of these. No problem. With a little know-how and an open mind, we can build a PC that'll get tons of FPS in your favorite games like Fortnite and GTA V. At this price, we are very constrained with what is possible. There's just no way we are getting a fully custom build for the same cost of 200 tacos from Jack in the Box, so we'll have to get creative. We definitely need a bare bones PC that we can convert. Something like a Dell Optiplex or an HP Workstation would work very well here. Buying one of these that has been retired from a workplace will give us a lot of components all at once. A case and case fans, power supply, motherboard, CPU and cooler, and maybe we can even get lucky and find one with some RAM or maybe even an SSD. It's unlikely we will find a modern workstation at a low price, so we need to look for something from a few years ago, or more like 10 years ago. You can check your local Facebook marketplace, offer up, and eBay obviously, but some other places you might find some good deals are places like local electronics recycle centers, Goodwill or thrift stores, pawn shops, and even university surplus stores. If you want to get one for free, you can even consider asking someone you know who's working at a large corporation and ask them what they do with their old workstations. Maybe they kick one to you for free instead of sending it to the recycle center. As for me, I'm not so lucky. So I just went onto eBay and found this Dell Optiplex 3020 that looked perfect. It comes with a Core i5 4570 CPU that isn't the most powerful chip in the world, but beggars can't be choosers. It also comes equipped with 4 gigs of DDR3 RAM, which isn't enough for our use case, but hey, at least it comes with it. Unfortunately, this listing does not come with an SSD or even a small hard drive. They had it listed for $40 and then included free shipping, but I felt like the listing was kind of lacking, so instead of trying to find a better listing, I simply sent an offer to this one for $30 and hoped that they said yes, and sure enough, they accepted the offer and sent the Optiplex my way. Getting this Optiplex for $30 was definitely a good deal, but it's not outside the realm of average pricing. So when sourcing your own workstation, look at many different places and don't be afraid to ask for a small discount. Speaking of discounts, let's take a quick look at this video sponsor. When you install Windows on your Steam Deck or any other PC for that matter, you're going to need to activate it to unlock all the settings. Why spend a ton of money for a code when you can use the sponsor of today's video, SCD Key? You can purchase Windows keys at a large discount, and to get 25% off your order, use code JASON, that's J-A-S-O-N, to get 25% off your order. After purchasing, you'll get your code pretty much instantly and be able to unlock your computer's full potential. And remember that all Windows 10 Pro users can upgrade to Windows 11 for free at any time in the future using these keys. Just take your code, go to your Windows activation menu, pop it in, and boom. Windows is activated, and you should be on your way. Thanks to SCD Key. Back to the PC. This 4 gigs of RAM is cute, but it's simply not enough when it comes to modern gaming. I'd say we could leave it in and just buy a few more sticks, but this Optiplex only has two DIMM slots, so the included stick has to go. You can feel free to try and resell this, but honestly, you might have trouble selling it for anything more than two or three bucks. I recommend just keeping it and using it as a backup in case you ever need to troubleshoot in the future. And instead, I found two sticks of DDR3 RAM that are 8 gigs each, totaling to 16 gigs of RAM total for our budget gaming PC. You can actually buy this type of RAM brand new on Amazon for about $17, but I got these a while ago used from someone on eBay for only $12. RAM is one of those things that probably aren't going to break on you anytime soon, so buying used over new makes a lot of sense if the price is right. But if you have the extra 5 bucks, just go ahead and buy from Amazon. For storage, buy as much storage as your budget can hold. 1TB SSDs are pretty cheap these days, so if you have the extra few bucks, I really recommend picking up one so you don't have to worry about constantly uninstalling games to make room for new ones. But the title of this video is $100, and I don't want to disappoint my audience. Well, any more than I already do. For our build here, I grabbed a 120GB 2.5-inch SSD from Amazon for $13 on sale. It's not much, but it'll hold our operating system and a few games. You don't have to go with this brand, but when deciding on an SSD for your system, just pick a brand that you've heard of. That's the only recommendation I can make at this price point. If it's a brand like Samsung, SanDisk, Kingston, PNY, Silicon Power, Team Group, or anything else that rings even the slightest bell, it should probably be okay. But if it's from a random collection of letters pretending to be an English word, just stay away. Now we're at the point where this is now a functioning computer. You can plug this in, and browse the web, watch YouTube, or use Discord to your heart's content. But it's the missing graphics card that is going to take this from a boring office PC to a boring gaming PC. When you look inside our Dell Optiplex here, you see that the clearance for GPUs is actually pretty small. This giant hard drive bay is in the way. This made a lot of sense back in the day as most computers used one or more hard drives back then, especially office PCs, and not many graphics cards back then were like the beefy three-fan monsters we have today. And the ones that were that big back then weren't going into office computers like this. If you find a good deal on a graphics card that is gigantic, you can actually remove this drive bay pretty painlessly with a power drill. 
and I'll drop a video guide on how to do that in the description. But today's video isn't about power drills. It isn't about painting your case. It's about getting a gaming PC with as little effort as possible for as little money as possible. So that means we aren't going to be replacing the power supply, which really limits what we can use in this rig. These power supplies are pretty reliable. They just don't have the highest wattage capabilities and don't have dedicated PCIe power cables that go to power your GPU. So we'll be utilizing one of these, which is an easy little adapter that goes straight into the six pin slot on your graphics card and then plugs directly into a SATA power slot from your power supply. I've utilized these a lot in the past and they work just fine for gaming rigs this low end. If you find a graphics card that requires two eight pins or something, I don't really recommend using two of these. At that point, you really need to upgrade the power supply. Luckily, this case can handle any standard ATX power supply, so you can easily remove the old one and put in whatever you want down the line when you save up some money for upgrades. But since we're not doing any mods with this PC today, I'm gonna to go ahead and use this GPU I bought used on Facebook Marketplace a few months ago. This is an RX 588GB 2048SP. It's from some random brand called Sanshuku. Sanshuku? I hardly know her! But it performed well last time I used it, so I'm happy with its performance. Obligatory, this isn't a real RX 580, it's more like a 570, etc, etc. And I actually kind of overpaid for this if you think about it. These are available on AliExpress for like $60 these days, brand new. So considering I bought this used for $50, not really much of a value there. You can actually buy real full fat RX 580s for like $50 locally these days. So in a perfect world, we'd be using that, but they vary in size and power draw wildly. So knowing we aren't swapping the power supply in this build, I just feel safer using this card that I know will work and fit. This model only has a max TDP of 150 watts, so that gives us a lot of headroom on our power supply and cable, meaning we'll be able to get full performance without risking any PSU shutdowns or, finger crossed, burning our house down. And after all said and done, the total price of this machine, when including the cost of the power adapter we bought, comes out to just over $100. So we went over a little bit. But those extra few dollars made the difference between using 8 gigs of RAM in single channel and using 16 gigs of RAM in dual channel. The change alone is gonna give us a massive performance boost in our benchmarks, and that's pretty much it. I don't need to do a build montage because there's not much to do. I'm also not gonna do a beauty shot montage because, well, let's just say this PC is a butter GPU. But just like me in high school, what it lacks in looks, it'll make up for in personality. I already pre-installed Windows and our graphics drivers, along with some games on this SSD, so we can test out the performance. So let's get to gaming and see what this $100 gaming PC can really do. So what can we conclude from these tests? Well, the RX 580 in this machine, paired with that wimpy i5 processor, is actually able to pump out some impressive frame rates in lower end games like GTA 5 or popular esports titles like Fortnite, Counter-Strike 2, or Valorant. We struggled a little bit in higher end games like Cyberpunk and Hitman, but for cinematic single player experiences, I actually think they were totally playable experiences. 
our day-to-day -day usage of the machine might be a bit more limited than a PC that we paid custom, meaning we might have some lag if we wanted to do something like streaming in the future because of our limited hardware. Uh, our fourth gen processor does not meet the minimum specs for Windows 11, so we'd be stuck on Windows 10 indefinitely. And there's not really any room for upgradability or any meaningful ones outside of a slightly beefier CPU with hyperthreading. I'd say the highest I'd go with this power supply and CPU is a lower end GTX 1070, and honestly that might be pushing it. Building something this old and rigid has some serious limitations. But if you really only truly have $100 to your name to buy a PC, or if you just want to dip your feet into PC gaming without spending a bunch of cash, this could really help you get started, and maybe after a few months, you realize this is something you actually want to pursue, you can save up some money and build something you're actually proud of. And if you do end up building something like this, just be aware of its limitations and adjust your expectations accordingly. I mean, come on, this thing costs one-fifth the price of a brand new PlayStation 5. If you want to build a custom gaming PC that will actually play every game possible at 1440p and most in 4K for only $600, you can check out my video here where I use the ever so famous 6700 XT to build up a fantastic mid-range build. My name's Jason. Thanks for watching.